And this is Yusuf. Um, since my hair is kind of jacked up, I put the hat on. Uh, so now we're back to this, apparently. We're back to the uh, old <laughs> turn of the century footage type stuff. <coughs> um, just a few things I want to mention before I get to uh, general butt naked. Um, as you see, I, I, when I was uploading the last video, I found a Coke uh, bottle, cut the top off, and filled, in, filled it with potting soil, or actually peat moss, and uh, I'm going to start growing something there. And whenever I find stuff like that, I always cut it off, and then, then, uh, then use it, uh, well, at least this time of year, that's why. Man's best friend is a dog, but his second best friend is a multi-tool. Probably an equal running. The other thing is, is uh, tomorrow, actually, I should say today, is Meat Fair Sunday. I believe it is. Um, so, all my Orthodox brethren are reminding you, go to church, because it's going to be awesome. <laughs> You're going to have all the different types of grilled meat and everything there. Because uh, the Orthodox, I mean, there's a joke that says, uh, you know you're Orthodox when you say a prayer before you pray. And we do uh, Lent as preparation for Holy Week, uh, which is preparation for Easter. So we prepare for Lent. As we go into Lent, we kind of stage down, you know, meat fair, cheese fair, you know, out of the different foods that you're uh, abstaining from. <coughs> but general butt naked. There's a movie called The Redemption of General Butt Naked, and he was a, uh, he was the leader, commander of a brigade of people, and they would run around butt naked, and he was known as General Butt Naked, because he'd be, he'd, he'd be, he would be butt naked, completely naked, <laughs> running around killing people, killing women, babies, raping women mutilating people, torturing people, then killing them, sometimes torturing uh, his own people, sometimes killing his own people. Just ruthless psychopath. He's in Liberia. And uh, it, the documentary begins with him evangelizing these people. He, he has now turned his life around and he's walking around all the victims saying, I'm sorry, the one woman who he killed his, uh, her, her brother, you know, he apologizes and says, you know, uh, please let me be the brother that I took from you. If you need anything, please call on me. I'll try to help you. Um, but I noticed the, in the wording, he says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to kill your brother. Um, uh, well, you know, when somebody's apologizing to somebody grieving, you know, you say stupid things, but, um, it, it might be true, it might not be, um, and it shows him, uh, then getting death threats as he becomes more popular in him, he, you know, he says he'll never abandon these people, he's got these people staying in this, uh, uh, room, and he's helping them out, and he says, you know, no drugs or alcohol in here, you must go to church every Sunday, you know, and he's helping these people out in this group, um, you know, of uh, former militants who had converted to Christianity or just uh, the poor people who had converted to form evangelism. And uh, he has his family, a wife and children. And then from death threats, I think he goes to the Congo or Nigeria. And he's in Nigeria for a while and he's sustains himself as uh, basically an itinerant preacher. He a wanted a traveling preacher. <clears throat> and then it shows him returning and there's people who say they hate him and then they make amends and there's people who say, I don't care how religious he is. Now he needs to pay for the crimes that he committed. Um, he went before a Truth and Reconciliation Council and he said how many people he killed and it actually astonished a lot of people. And they actually uh, did not recommend him for The Hague because he came forward and he told the whole story. 
Um, and the whole time <coughs> I was, and I think it's meant to prompt the viewer to question, why is he doing this? Why is he, is his conversion to evangelism uh, really, is it real or is it out of necessity? Is it out of um, basically needing to uh, both needing to feel cleansed of the guilt and uh, basically saying, "Well, oh, I'm a different man. I'm a new man. I'm not that old guy. That 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 crazy guy that killed you. That was somebody different." What is his? What are his motives? You know. Um, and you hear him. Pre you hear him preaching in the beginning of the documentary, and he says. Um, love is the only, or he says, you need to love your enemies, love those who wronged you, forgive those who wronged you. He says, Christianity is the only thing that can heal this nation, because Christianity is the only religion that, that uh, preaches um, to love those who wronged you, and to forgive those who, who are your, love your enemies, and forgive those who wronged you. Well, yeah, that might, it's true. That's probably I don't think any other religion says that as explicitly as Christianity. Maybe in some other forms of religion, but yeah, that's true. But look who's saying it. Somebody who had he admitted that he killed like twenty thousand people. I believe the number was, and he wasn't just killing soldiers. He was going after civilians. Babies, pregnant women, little children, torturing these people, raping women. Uh, it's interesting to watch. It, it wasn't that alluring of a documentary. I mean, it's not, it, you know, wasn't, you know, trying to, it, it, it wasn't trying to prove a point, you know. Like some documentaries are, that House of Numbers was riveting watching that. This one, you, you're kind of just watching a person and, it's it's kind of odd you get, the odd feeling you get when you come away from it of okay who you know what what's really going on here and we'll never know my personal view is it's both he does uh he does rely on god he does believe in god he does believe god healed him and saved him and that he does believe he's a real christian probably is, but also I think there's a self-preservation aspect in there. At a time when someone who did such horrible, mean atrocities to other people now doesn't have that power and uh, is weaker and that now that there's an established government in Liberia and now that they're holding trials, uh, it's a good idea to preemptively go out and say you're a Christian and do all these kind of good works and everything and uh, try to help the poor people, this and that. And then when they when a Truth and Reconciliation Committee comes for you, you say, yep, I'll go, I'll go definitely. You don't try to resist or back out or say, no, I didn't do anything because everybody, people, I mean, yeah, we saw the guy. <coughs> After the truth and reconciliation thing, I think that's when he got the death threats on him and his family. And it's also him, uh, I mean, now, you know, he they said he showed, his wife was talking in one part and said, yeah, he showed up at church and I wanted nothing to do with him. But I saw him, he kept coming to church and he, he was a changed person. And other people talk about how he was changed and some of his former enemies talk about how he is changed. Some of his former commandos speak very highly of him, saying he's, he will live forever, bullets can't touch him. Because before he was a Christian, uh, when he uh, was, uh, <clears throat> even before the the uh, Civil War had started, he was a voodoo priest. And he believed that's what gave him power, and that's why he was naked. It was... Uh, for a psychological effect and because he believed that there's a, a deity that gave him, he, he says a deity gave him a, uh, a cutlass sword to go and kill people with. So 
and he even talks about he preferred uh, killing people with the cutlass rather than the bullet. If he got the opportunity, he'd get up close to you and actually, which there's a severe difference between stabbing somebody and shooting somebody. It really is uh, a difference between shooting somebody long range and being up close to him and driving the blade into him. Uh, any psychoanalyst can tell you about that or uh, even people who have done it can tell you about that. It's, in, it's an interesting documentary. It's called uh, The Redemption of General uh, Butt Naked. Um, and his name is, I think, Jonah Bilal. Not, but no, not Bilal. Bilae. Bly. Or Jonas Bly. I don't know. They, they, they mostly refer to him as General Butt Naked. And when he's talking about it, you know, doing these recreations of, oh, that moved like this and that. <clears throat> he's reminiscing <clears throat> and there's almost something of bragging in 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 his voice um, so I think it's both um, but uh, I do have to say um, I have to do even do put my own warning up there uh, I'm not a fan of evangelical Christianity so I think he can uh, can be an evangelical Christian. He is. Um, but I also think there's a lot of self-preservation in there. And uh, yes, we're not supposed to judge people, but it didn't... It did, not guilt. I don't want to say guilt, but it, uh, there, there didn't seem to be that much remorse. Now, this is a documentary, and, you know, documentaries are edited, and they don't show the full per person's life, so I can't... I'm not going to condemn the man. I won't do that. I'm not going to pass judgment against him, saying, "Oh, he is wicked and evil." But check out the documentary. It's it's uh, it's awfully strange. Um, it's done mediocrely, but there's enough there. I mean, just showing the story and showing the bloodshed that was in Liberia uh, is enough. And uh, just hearing him at different places in front of the Truth and Reconciliation. Um, board and him in preaching, him talking to individuals, individuals talking about him positively, negatively, him going off to uh, exile or whatever, a foreign country, I think it was Nigeria, could have been a Congo, and then his return, um, him reuniting with a one of his commandos who they he claims that a guy came through the door and gave him uh, a Bible and said, please read this. And he's like, what are you joking? And the guy walked out and then he went down to his guard and he said, why did you let that man in? And the guy said, what man? So he shot him in the legs and dragged him into the bathroom and left him there for five days while you get shot in both your legs for, and you're not treated for five days. The guy and get his legs amputated. Uh, so he he tries to make, he made peace with him at the end. Well, I shouldn't have given that away, but whatever. Uh, but it'll it'll keep you thinking for a while. I mean, after you watch it, I mean, I've, I, wa I watched it, like, what, a week ago, and then I re started rewatching it, and there's, it, it, it keeps you thinking. Peace to you, may God save Serbia, uh, to all my Orthodox brothers, or people who wouldn't mind visiting an Orthodox church. Today is the day to do it. It's meat fair. Peace to you. God save Serbia.